Welcome back, everybody. We are in. We're in. We're in. We're in. I had a crazy weekend. Did you have a crazy weekend, John? What'd you do? Uh, fuck, dude. Work. I work every weekend, so yeah. Word. Yeah. Life is work, isn't it? Yeah, work will set you I free, I find though. that life, just living, is exhausting. Uh-huh. Just even being alive. And then work is almost just a way to numb yourself from from thinking about that all day long. Yeah, you know, I... I uh I turned 28 and all of a sudden it's like, you don't have free time anymore. You just, no. It stops. Well, I don't think anyone's ever really had free time. We have just such little time. I just remember being like 25 and like I would have like days off. Yeah, sure. And I would just do what I wanted. And then I turned 28 and all of a sudden it was like, you got to go to the courthouse. Yeah. You got to go pay a bill. Mm-hmm. You got to go mm-hmm. rent a U-Haul. Yeah. You got to go cancel this you got to go start that you got to go downtown you well you know john if you're ever feeling too disillusioned you can always join the church of scientology yeah they'll solve all your problems they'll for gladly you. Give accept them all your you money. give them all your money um yeah. yeah they'll make sure you truly never have a second to yourself yeah, um, you, know, you know giving all your money to make sure you have a decent level of living and you're not homeless is like you're not actually people like you're giving them all your money you're, no, you're paying for the club yeah well, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you're paying, you're paying to be a participating member in a cult. I mean, it's, it's, there's yeah. no, there's no such thing as a free lunch. They're folks. not going to hang you out to dry though. No, you know I, mean, I mean, no, they will. No, they'll hang you out to dry. You know. Um, well, the thing is, is I've had a lot of, th- th- I had a very Scientology filled weekend. Um, oh, whoa. well, actually the past huh? few days yesterday, maybe what I happened? guess not the weekend, but yeah, yesterday I was in Hollywood. I had to, I had to do something in Hollywood. And so I parked mm. my car where I had to be incidentally was next to the Scientology center. Celebrity or? Yeah. Celebrity center. The celebrity center. Well, no, 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 that, oh, I'm sorry. Oh no. The, the I, headquarters. I went to HQ. both places yesterday. What the hell are you doing? At different points. At one point I was hanging out with my friend and yeah. then on my way back, I just see in front of me as I'm, I'm as I'm leaving his place, I see a Scientology center, celebrity center uh, sign right in yeah, front of me. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? And then earlier in the day yesterday, I had to be at the, at some place next to the Scientology Scientology Center, and the head, the head guy, right? The what? The head one on Hollywood or Sunset? Yeah, the one by Kaiser P- Permanente yeah, 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 on yeah. Sunset. I think. I think it's Hollywood. Could it's, be wrong. It's Hollywood. No, it's Same Hollywood Street. Who gives a fuck? It's like close to. It's like close to Fountain. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I think maybe Olympic, maybe not. I don't know. Um, it's by Fountain no, for no, sure. Olympics way down. <laughs> not there. Olympic. Sorry. I'm fucked up. <laughs> Yo, you've had half I got a them. Claw. I got them fucked up. Uh, uh, but so, yeah. but bro, it was crazy. I was walking around and you know, listen, it's a stunning building. For anyone that doesn't know what it looks like, let's just give you a little glimpse of what the building, the big main Beautiful building of building. Scientology. And I always forget, you know, I'm a woman. I'm so directionally challenged. I never know where the fuck I am at any given moment. I Google yeah. maps everything. I have a vague understanding of LA, just like I had a vague understanding of Dallas when I lived there, but my brain just doesn't operate in such a way where I know yeah. where I'm going. I just, re- I defer to the maps. Yeah, I've seen Guy to use Google maps to like find her laundry room it's ridiculous yeah. yeah it's really to that level i just feel like there's so much i want to fill my brain with i i don't care to fill it with like directions and like north south yeah. just forget that Not, you'll never need those i won't <laughs> i have with the advent of te- technology barring yeah. a road trip to the middle of nowhere new mexico or texas yeah. what the fuck do i need to know that shit yeah. for i mean i literally don't know how to read a physical map anyways um interesting yeah uh but okay, so the celebrity there's Scientology Center, and I don't know if the Celebrity Center is next to this no, or it's not. it's not right. It's not far away, but it's not next to it. Yeah, so this is a massive blue building, right? Yeah, and yeah, so I parked my car the only place where there was an available parking lot, which is right off the. It's on the side of yeah. the big, massive, massive fucking. It's like you feel like you're in like Aaron Spelling's home or some shit. Like it's crazy. It's actually way bigger than that. What am I even saying? Um, Scientology building. on Sunset, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the Church of Scientology. I mean, like the outside of the building. Oh, it is on Sunset? Yeah, it's on okay, Sunset. Yeah. yeah, Sunset I and stand Su- corrected. Sunset and Fountain. Crazy Listen building. Listen to me. I'm pretty fucking good, apparently. Crazy building. I mean, love the font. Boom. It's 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 both astonishingly cool looking and tacky and like a Greek diner kind of feeling. Yeah, crazy. Do what you know is what that? I mean? Not that I dislike the Greek diner aesthetic. I actually really love it. Um, But it's it's a, such an odd color of blue. What'd you say? Is that a crucifix there underneath? That's, that's, um, that's It's like that. a... Uh, underneath, you mean on top, right there? On top, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a, some sort of religious emblem. It looks certainly looks like a crucifix. So this is their outfits. They all look yeah. like um like uh, Dasha and her first like they're wearing the sailor outfits and stuff. They look yeah. really good. Oh, like, the, 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 the Scientologists. You saw look, sea Org. The Sea Org. Well, yeah. 
I wonder if is anyone that's in the organization in the Sea Org because I didn't see anybody I, walk around that building that didn't have that outfit on. I think Sea Org is like their special forces. Well, that's what I'm saying. So everyone must meet. It must be like the Israeli the army where you have like a, you have like two years mandatory yeah. like training because they're all in the sailor outfit. Elrond Every was single in the one Navy, of them. so he's obsessed with the Navy. I oh yeah. right. So Elrond okay. Elrond was not only in the Navy. I believe he was a captain of a very small boat, and he was a horrible captain. And he accidentally bombed the Channel Islands off the coast of San Diego. Oh, my and God. And I think he, like, got Was it massive, an accident? Yeah, he was an idiot. And he got in, like, massive trouble for that. Um, the uh, uh, Elrond also shared a wife with Jack Parsons, I believe. Okay, interesting. It's so weird that you actually can't find the Scientology uniform. Like, it's not on Google Images. What is that well, about? Duck, did duck, they go these bad boys? Well, it's just interesting. I'm like, do they control Google too? Like, oh, it's, it's it's insane. I think I, if we gave Google like 45k, they would just like remove all mentions of us. Um, if you looked up John, will on, they if you create looked, mentions of us? Yeah. We, if you looked <laughs> me up on Google, it would just be like pictures of me with like Brad Pitt's body. It would just be your dad. <laughs> it would be like, yeah. it'd be your dad, and people would just say Sea Org. So this is, I Hell guess, yeah. vaguely what they look like. That's David and Ms. Cabbage. But their outfits have obviously changed. The ones that they're wearing around the building don't look like that. There's no updated photos of this. I mean, they are so crazy secretive. The first thing I see when I drive by there is a guy photographing people walking by the building. It's insane. Yeah. And I don't know if they were doing a photo shoot. There was a photo shoot elsewhere on the, because this is a huge building. So there's a massive perimeter Bigger than the building is the parking lot that contains the building. Uh -huh. So you have endless amounts of space and nobody dare go into that parking lot that isn't either wearing one of those uniforms or ready to shell out, you know, some, some fucking rupees. Like the, they want your money. And there were these massive life size, like huge size, uh, like blow up uh, Dianetics books like almost like sculptures or structures, like two of them in front of the building. Massive, yeah. like a billboard that's just like standing upright on its own. And then I see a guy, you know, very clean cut, wearing his little sailor outfit, taking yeah. photos of everybody. And then I see, um, this was what I found strange and kind of a little spooky. There, uh, there were couples, several Sea Org couples in their little sailor outfits, walking around the building's perimeter. I'm not joking, taking laughs, okay? Yeah. They looked so happy, John. I saw three different couples. They looked so happy and they were like, you know, not, not they were PDAing. Like they were definitely showing PDA, not in a gross, inappropriate way, not in a Lo Lauren Boebert way, but rather yeah. in like a very family friendly, kind of wholesome, like were, I'm, you know, my arms around my, you know. My gal. Yeah. Look at me like, my gal. Yeah, my, what is it? My, my gal, Skip, my whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm trying to bring up what a psyop you're falling yeah, for. I, but but I'm like, are they actors? Yeah, dude. No, are they fucking actors? Yeah, These aren't dude. real couples. Just a bunch of couples, of course, they're actors. Yeah, it's weird. They're dressed sharp in uniforms. They, ho they they're hoping to do so them. So in love, I was <laughs> like, you know, if I didn't know any better, okay, if the advent of the internet had not been in my day and age, I would have looked at them. Well, you know, they look pretty happy. What are they? What are they doing? Because dudes are gonna walk by there. They think they're going to do the thing that uh, the Marine Corps did in the 90s where they had the, the the commercial where the Marine was slaying the dragon then turns into the guy in the dress blues. They're thinking a young man's going to walk by there and go, dude, that guy's a cool-ass Navy uniform. And he's got, and he's a, got a chick bitch. with him. He's got a bitch with him, and they're happy, and I'm going to join. Yeah. And uh, I would love to show up there dressed like I'm in the – I'm going to get an Iranian colonel, <laughs> colonel's uniform and walk in. And just fake an accent and be like, I'm here as an ambassador to the part the, you know, the United. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would work. Um, I'm here to have a discussion. Oops. About somewhat combining forces. Shit. I, I accidentally stopped recording, but I re-recorded and I think we're fine. All right. Well, we are good. Hope to God. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're fine. The, uh, the, uh, I just have to stitch them together because I yeah, suck ass. So that's okay. Stitch. That's okay. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you're saying about the Iran. Who You'd get an Iranian what? Colonel? Look up Iranian Navy Navy uniform. It'll just show up with a bunch of fake medals on my chest, asking, just <laughs> acting confused. Uh, what, you wearing an Iranian Navy? Yeah, outfit? it'd be really funny. I, sh I show up in a naval outfit. I, I walk in with a bunch of fake medals on my chest. I fake an accent, and I just act really confused. I'm like, is this a Navy? Like, can I speak to you? I need to, yeah, I'll dress, John I'll John literally be dressing, that guy. Dressing like this guy? They, they're white. I'll show it's not, up there. It's not a bad uniform, actually. Yeah, clean, slick uniform. I'll show up there and be like, "I'm here to speak to the." This guy could be a Scientologist. Yeah, I'm here to speak to the admiral. Sure. 
I mean, uh, well, so it was just an interesting experience because I saw them and then I saw the same three people circling on their own. And then there was a woman walking by, not just the periphery of the, the perimeter of the building, but even on the outside of that to the residential homes. Cause I think they own some of those homes oh, as sure. well. Oh, for and sure. it's fucking weird. I'm like, so you not only do you own the biggest piece of real estate You're talking about that behind. I've seen in Los Angeles proper, but you own the surrounding homes? Like, yeah, do they yeah. abuse insane? And there was a, a woman there, I'm not joking, like, a, a, like just literally manicuring a palm leaf on one of the little trees, really watching people. Not like, not, they didn't care about the leaves that much. Although it is a very well manicured, you know. Mm. It, so it was just weird. And then I saw a really pretty girl walk by. Um, you know, uh, I, she must have been mixed, like Asian, Latina, and maybe she was a little black and she oh they all are yeah they all have those outfits on she was so pretty and i and and she smiled at me and i smiled at her and that was the only positive interaction yeah i had and i just thought to myself i was like i wanted to like save her i want to be like you're uh, you could you could be a star she doesn't need to be saved, <laughs> like i was like she's looking at you she's going back to her group she's saying the same thing about you oh, that's how this pretty orion go walking <laughs> down the street and i just wanted to save her and bring yeah. her into the cult I mean, listen, she, she might not be wrong. I mean, she's probably like, let me help you out of your fucking miserable life. Listen, if I was in Scientology, like... It's the Spider-Man meme. I would be, I would be deceived and I would be stupid, but at least I would like have health care. Yeah. You know, I would probably have a community of people that... You um, had a house. Supported me until That's I was maybe raped. They're not hanging you out to dry. You got a room. You got Well, four, those rape victims, meals. they did apparently. Well, you know, I don't know if yeah. that happens anymore. I don't even know what's going on with that. That seems I, very I, 90s. It's Yeah. I mean, listen, the thing is, is, yeah, they don't even care about They're like, you might just go missing. But no. I mean, well, and, and they seem pretty happy. I mean, it's not, it's not crazy outlandish for me to think if the internet wasn't here, if we didn't have access to this information and I was a lost soul, you know, in the world in desperate need of like community and feeding. friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not Dayton. That's, 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 that's once you get to the OT levels, you've already given them so much money, but you know, I can see a world in which, you know, Scientology looks attractive to me mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm going through a lot of emotional distress and somebody is telling me that, you know, they have the answer to everything. But, you know, but but that's the thing is like, it's not that much wackier than Christianity. It's not that much. Wa I mean, it is pretty fucking it's wacky. way wackier than all well, the Abrahamic no, religions. I, no, I don't think so. I, I think I think in all of their it's actually less so because in because dogma, there's not as much history in, to, to, you know, extract wackiness from. There's just dogma, a few comic books. Possibly and not. In huh? dogma, possibly not. But like, I think in like his yeah, history is what makes it less wacky is there's so much. There's way more legitimacy in. in because more people. people have accepted it or because there's more accepted truth it, to it. But accepted it for thousands of years, I think. It just and, adds more legitimacy. And we've been it. mired in, in war and crime and poverty. And oh, but think of what else all sorts of shit brought for, us with literature. I'm not saying and, that we have to science. you know throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm not saying no. there's no good. I love Christmas. There's a lot of great Christians out there. I don't yeah. see anything. I went to church growing up. I don't see anything wrong in instilling, you know, values or whatever into your kids. But at the end of the day, these religions are making claims that they have no real uh, evidence of. And so <laughs> in many ways, they're, yeah. they're like some, you know, <laughs> me tooers, you well, know, but, but, you but, know. but they, I'm, I'm just saying, and I, I, and I don't begrudge anybody for believing in any of it. Life sucks. Okay. And believe mm -hmm. in what you have to believe in to get through the fucking day. If you need to believe, you know, there's some Mount Zenu, whatever, whatever's even above that, that they're not telling us fucking, you know, be my guest. I don't begrudge you for it, whatever. But to act as though like any of this shit is not wacky to me, mm -hmm. to me is dishonest just because I find it all to be a claim. Like if you're claiming something. It's just a different ultimate reality. All these people just have a different ultimate reality. Yeah. And I then, mean, you know, it's, it's, that's what they drilled into me in Catholic and religion schools is religion. Religion is a system of beliefs and practices based on an experience with an ultimate reality. Their ultimate reality is, uh, is L. Ron Hubbard, uh, went to outer space. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's crazy. Well, I mean, the thing is, is with any religion, you have to, you have to have faith, right? And in doing so, you have to suspend maybe your better judgment or your better instincts that would maybe tell you to question things that are beyond our realm of understanding, right? Yeah. So so in that sense, you have to be able to just kind of like submit to that a bit. And, and mm -hmm. if you have to kind of turn reality off a little bit to have that inner peace and that inner sanctity, fine. I mean, like anything, there are no solutions as the, as the great Thomas Sowell yeah. said, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. And you know, with Scientology, it's like, you know, you got to give up your, you know, 
sanity, but you get to have a little happiness. You yeah. know what I mean? It's and when I see them, John, I have to be honest, walking around that place, they look very happy. Well, that's their best and Those brightest. Those people, they look, they look like I mean, some of them are very young, and they look happy as clams. They look happy as clams, and I'm like, why would I want to disturb that peace within somebody? I don't have that kind of peace. I don't feel that good to, uh, in my day to day as they do, walking around that place doing perimeter sweeps of you know leaves or whatever happens to be floating around on the outside, and, and making you know looking at at anybody that happens to surround that building. And sometimes it's like crazy homeless people. So these people are interacting with like all honestly all of yeah. the people in that area. I mean, this is smack dab in the middle I of Hollywood. Just want to okay? hang out there. It, I do too, but you feel scared. I literally want to take a picture of the building, John, and I was far away from it. I was afraid to because they're watching you at every yeah, I don't care. fucking turn. And it's called L. Ron Hubbard Way. That's the street, big street. And everyone just, and you can tell who's in the church and who isn't in the church. And, you know, I, I they those people look happy. You know, they look really happy. And it's because they're fucking crazy. You and know, you have to be a little crazy to be happy, I think. It'd be really funny to steal Valor as a Sea Org person mm -hmm. and just like go into Starbucks and add, demand your, your uh, veteran discount because you're do a member of Sea Org. No. Oh. <laughs> At that Starbucks, they probably do. I mean, they're probably like the mafia. They probably get a in. cut of that Starbucks profits. Yeah. The I'm gonna one be right in, next to it. That'd be so funny to walk in there and with a naval uniform and some like see some fucking like Scientologist comes up to you and goes, dude, your, your fucking badge is on the wrong side of your fucking jacket. <laughs> Let me see your DD-214. Like, DD two fourteen. That's what they always demand that in the stolen valor videos. Probably only the operating things. Yeah, I mean they're like audits. Who are the guys that did do those audits videos? Yeah, audit the Scientology Center, pussies. Oh, they would never, dude. No, they would get out audited so fucking fast. Our, pa so our Patreon quick. episode that I'm sorry is not up yet. I well, it is now at this point when you're seeing this, but it wouldn't upload for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I've tried uploading it five different ways, but it's about Scientology and UFOs. Um, but. We talk about like Leah Remini, dude, somebody in the fucking live chat of our last premiere mm. episode of the Danny Masterson thing, uh, got fucking mad at me and was like rude to me because I said a little quippy thing about Leah Remini. I mean, it was She's like, got I didn't, it was fucking crazy. Yeah. I also complimented her looks. You're a looking lady. I just said that the Scientology beat is getting a little old. People be getting mad, Ida. I they mean, it's just like, what am I saying that's incorrect you here? You can't make everyone It happy. is getting a little bit old. Like, it's getting a little old where we don't care anymore. Yeah, Scientology's you know, yeah, so I said that All I said was that her whole thing was that her whole life she's been defined by her cult, by Scientology. And I'm saying, okay, great, good riddance. You did your, like, you know, 10-part a docu docuseries about it, whatever you did. Like you did that. Now you can move on with your life and no mm. longer be defined by the cult. But instead, all you're doing is like, I get it. You're like an advocate. But let's just be honest about it. The people that are often victims of this have the money to spend. And some of them aren't, you know, some of them go into credit card debt and they ruin their lives and whatever. But things really? are, but yeah, of course, because mm. they'll get like what you were saying. They'll give you that Amex to what you were saying when you said, I'm going, yeah. I, I, I want to go in there and I want to say I'm going clear and they'll give you that Amex in the Patreon. Yeah. So you, that like, that does happen. But on the whole, if you're getting swallowed by a cult, it's because you had the money to give it to them. And if you didn't, and you did it anyway, as much as that sucks and as bad as I feel for you, you had agency in that decision. It's not as if somebody came and extorted you. Well, they do, they do do that. I mean, it's a religion built on extortion and blackmail. So in that sense, that's very much what happened. But it's not as if you didn't have access to information to um, warn you about that, you know, which Whoa. is which is the fact that anyone who consumes media has heard about this organization scamming on people. So it's amazing to me that they have as many people in there as they do. And whatever kind of like, you know, brainwashing skills they have. I don't know if they have people from like the Israeli fucking army coming in there and training them, but it's like they get, oh, for sure they they get people to believe in this shit despite every part of the internet warning you against it. And that blows my mind. It well, there's always going to be, mind. there's always, I know they're anti-therapy. Are they anti-internet? Like it's the goddamn Streisand paradox. Streisand, what is it? Paradox? Streisand? Streisand effect. Streisand but how effect. so? Yeah. Well, you fucking, everybody on internet's telling you these people are evil. Don't join up. And then you're like, you know, fuck these guys. I'm going to see what it's, but it's all not about. An act, but it's not an act of rebellion to give somebody all of your money. It's only an yeah, act I mean, of rebellion to, you. to yourself. You're not cheating anybody but yourself. Not to you. People. I was my, what my mom always told me growing up. You're cheating, you're cheating nobody but yourself. Yeah. All you're doing is cheating yourself. And, um, and that's what they're, that's essentially what they're doing. But again, maybe they're not because they do look really happy. They look like peachy out there. All of them happy. Mm -hmm. Not a, not a single. And again, maybe that's their job. Maybe they're, they're maybe they're yeah, literally they're actors. actors. Yeah. I don't know. But if they are, give them awards. They're very good. Yeah. They're very good. I would want that person in my film. If they're doing live action, no camera crew. 
It's pretty impressive that they could deliver on that level. Yeah. That I'm just sitting here as a bystander in my car, and they've taken three laps because I was, you know, I people watch, I be people watching, mm -hmm. but they were fucking people watching me, and I'm sitting in my car minding my own damn business. Not really. I mean, I'm looking, but. I didn't ever think they would be aware of my presence, but they were fully aware of my presence. And I'm just somebody in the middle of Hollywood, like anybody else. It's a weird place. You know, it's, it's, extremely it's, an, it's weird. an odd like, did place. Did they know that I just did an episode about them and I say Scientology sucks ass? Probably not. No, they don't. But why do this, Why are they making me feel like they do? Like, well, it's crazy. They, it's huge. Super <laughs> intimidating. Well, they're intimidating. I was, you know, a little big. But like, we'll go crazy. back. I'll walk in there. I'll go. I will have, a, I'll have, I'll, you go there with me. I'll walk in the front door. I'll make someone give us a tour. No way, dude. Watch. They'll like they'll do some shit where they scan. Watch. They they'll they have that Israeli technology. They'll scan my eyes or some shit. Yeah, fucking. I don't want to no, be in some don't database. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to be. It's dirty and murky. I don't want to we'll be part there. of Scientology's metadata. Okay, I'll go in there and I'll be like, hey, I want to take a test. Yeah. Give me one of the tests. Dude, John will become full blown Scientologist. He'll leave the show and he'll be like, he can't talk to anyone. Yeah, no, I, I I wouldn't do that. But um, you'd do it for three months as like a gag. It'd be funny. Yeah. And then you'd be like, they have everything on me. They're gonna come for the D to my There's house. There's nothing to hide. I will tell. I will gladly like any skeletons I have in my closet are like like they're like halfway out the. I don't care. I don't care. Your shirt if is so knows. wild, by the way. Mike with Mike Tyson. It's so wild. Kicks ass, dude. Yeah. I love, know. love Mike. Well, from a um, distance, it looks like. Like a Mexican pop group or something, or a Mexican rap group. Oh, just like four different yeah, black dudes. I love it. Um, uh, Mike yeah. Tyson wouldn't wouldn't stand for this for Scientology. Yeah, he'd punch through everybody. Right. He'd well, go, I'm, I'm going in. The, how dare you tell me spend my money? Fuck you. He'd be like, "That's fine. Just give us the money." He goes, "Yo, I ain't gonna spend. I want my pigeons. I want to put pigeon <laughs> pants on top of the roof of the Scientology." Well, I'm center. operating Satan. Oh, fuck you, too. Love me, faggot. I can't do it. I can't do his accent. He's a heavy lisp. But, yeah. I, I mean, these people are, Scientologists, they're very creepy. But And then and then later that night, I went on my way home, and I immediately see this Scientology Celebrity Center. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Well, you're in the area. Huh? You're in the area. Yeah. You're in the, you're in the Scientology zone. Yeah. And then you go down the street, and there's the Scientology studio. It's just crazy, because it's... They bought it's ABC the, Studios. The whole area is theirs. The they whole bought, area. Disney couldn't hold on to their studios. Scientology bought them. What are they making there? I know there's, no, make I know there's no writer strike there. No, hell no. I'm going to walk in there. I'm going to ask for a job. No, uh, I know. I'm literally going to see if they're hiring. I mean, but that's the problem is you have to be ingratiated into the cult first before they let you like in, in. And then even then you have to go through all these like hoops to get to the higher levels or whatever. And um, then it's a whole thing. I'm going to be the official bartender of Scientology. Okay. I doubt they have anybody. I'm going to go in there. You know, you know, you, knowledge. You know, you go into like uh, military recruitment offices and you're like, I want to be a, I want to be a pilot. I'm going to go in there and be like, you guys need bartenders. Right. I know you do. Yeah. I know you guys are are training them in-house to be like, bartenders. Like you can scratch my back. I can scratch I'll be yours. like, listen, I, do, I will make you guys the best old-fashioned ever. I will make Mascovich, whatever his name is, Miscavige. Miscavige, Miscavige. The best old-fashioned he's ever had. Sure, Just sure. have me sit and everybody loves their bartender. You're like, me and Jenna Elfman, we're going to be like this. Yeah. We're going to be like this. I'll be swoon, swooning the elite of Scientology. You'll be hanging out with Michael Pena, you know, talking mm -hmm. about his next role. And, but, but this is what I was also stressing in the last episode. We People don't actually hate Scientology. Like, Leah Remini is out there, you know, fighting the good fight. Good for her. Like, no judgment. But no one cares. They're not getting not booked for acting gigs. Yeah, Top it's not Gun 2006 came out. anymore. Top Gun Nobody came out. Shit. And it was one of the most watched movies. Uh, Michael Pena is about to portray, a, a, I just saw an AP article about his portrayal of something. He was very close friends with Danny Masterson, as I stated in my last episode. Yeah. No one gives a shit, dude. I mean, just because Danny Masterson's going away doesn't mean that like Scientology members aren't going to work. I, last time I checked, uh, you know, well, actually I was going to say Will Smith. No, but he slapped somebody. It's not for Scientology. Um, although Scientology could have made him do it. But there's, 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 Scientologists out there that are working actors. That is the entire point. They yeah, are just, not, they're not discriminated against in this town in any way, shape or form, except what we look at, uh, how we look at Scientology on the whole. That's one thing. But in terms of like the hiring process, they're not exempt they, from They it. have the money. Why didn't they just get fucking the Robert Durst lawyer from Masterson? Mm -hmm. They have the money. Why did they just get like they Robert Durst? They got Sean Hawley. She's an incredibly famous defense attorney, oh, really? celebrity. Yeah, she yeah. couldn't fucking do it. I guess. I mean, listen, maybe he did it. And 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 here, I also want to address this. A lot of people had like some problems that I said in the last episode. That's to be expected. I understand. My entire point was not to um, clear Danny Masterson of any wrongdoing. I wasn't there in the trial. I don't know what he fucking did. Okay, I. 
don't particularly care. I am desensitized to Me Too stories. I'm sorry. They've been shoved down our throats for long enough. I'm over it. I'm over it. Even if he did it, that sucks. But it's 20 years after the fact and you can't expect people to still care. You cannot expect people to give a shit anymore. I don't give a shit about Danny Masterson. I don't Masterson. give a fuck about any of those people. I don't even give a fuck about him. I spent one night, like, not with him like that, but like- She spent I one night with him. Him. One night with Danny Masterson. Yeah. What if I was just like a, a woman scorned because I wasn't raped? I mean, I yeah, made yeah. that joke, but it was like, obviously a joke. Um, yeah. I, again, <laughs> as somebody comments, they're like, I was once in a car with a murderer. You never know what someone's capable of. I'm like, true, you know? I've probably been in a car with a murderer. I know like three murderers. Well, that's of your own. That's the reality of your own making, John. You you probably yeah. sought them out in some weird freakish way. You're like, no, oh, you're a murderer. Suck. Let's exchange info. Yeah, Would they, love to get to know you, sir. They're case. all right. Yeah. Um, you the, uh, became friends with a murderer, so you could say that here, and I respect you for it. Yeah. I, I love you for bringing that to the table. Uh, the uh, <laughs> thank you. No, honestly, f- far more interesting than somebody who doesn't. It, it's no murder. It's funny when it's, so, it's funny when someone someone uh, uh, is like, uh, yeah, you know, someone, you know, they did time, or you know, somebody c- c- killed someone in war or something. It's like, you know, oh, I yeah, know whatever. guys who've killed people. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. You know. It, the Leah Remini thing really like was like out of control because here's the thing. I said she's pretty, but it's a little much with the Scientology thing. It's a fucking cult for rich people. It's for the uh, upwardly mobile people that have nothing better to do with their disposable income than to deceive themselves into thinking that someone's going to give them the answers when in fact they uh, both parties know that's not going to happen deep down, yet they continue yeah. in their in their journey of being fucking extorted anyway. Like I all I said was that we're a little sick of it, but I said she's pretty. And here's the thing, if you're a woman, we're sick in the head, right? If I were to say, and, and she wouldn't admit, let's say Leah Remini could hear what I said, she wouldn't be mad at me deep down, even she, you- because because I said she was good looking. So despite me saying that I, she's getting a bit annoying and her ideas are a little too much and it's a little narcissistic that it's like, oh, this happened to you. So you're gonna talk about it for the next 80 years. You're on one show, the king and the queen and no one cares and yeah. that's fine. And maybe you're a good actor and you could have brought something to the table outside of being like JLo's best friend. And, and I, by the way, I watched all those series that she did and i enjoyed them okay mm-hmm. but i'm a little sick of it okay it's like every time there's something happening with scientology it's like leah remini is tweeting leah remini's on it's like great she's very pretty but if she were to hear me she'd be like well she would pretend like she's mad at me for you know dispelling what she's doing but she would deep down be like well at least she said i was pretty versus if i were to advocate for everything she's saying and then call, and her, then ugly. call her ugly she'd fucking want me killed okay? yeah yeah, yeah. She, and she would probably hire a scientist Women are despicable. to do it. Yeah, we are. Uh, we you're are despicable, despicable human beings. Uh, what? Uh, what? What? And that's um, why I'm joining the Church of Scientology. Uh, so uh, yeah, I just I just don't get it. if you're like bulletproof. That's the thing. Like I, you, they couldn't get anything on me. You know. Well, they could get I, I you to take said, out credit and buy Dynetics. Yeah, but it's like there's got to be there's got to be whistleblowing. Like, like if they if they're like, hey, we got a guy. Well, Dynetics. that's my problem with the remedy. I'm like, the, we were saying in the last episode. I'm like, what is sh- they call her a whistleblower? I'm like, are we just letting anybody be called a whistleblower now? No, I would if if they call if they were like, yo, listen, we're gonna get you two hundred fifty thousand dollar credit with Amex, and I'm like, um, okay, do that, and then Let I get me, it. I, I want to go clear. I completely abuse the two hundred fifty thousand dollars credit. The of second I get that fucking, you don't buy a single copy of Dynetic. Thing. Here's the th- okay. Here's the here's the grift. You don't take everybody. a single class. Here's the fucking grift, right? So you get to that point. Okay, yeah. so if you're if you're suicidal, uh, this is even better because I always had a question. I was like, if you're suicidal, why don't you just rob a bank? If you get away with it, you get away with it. If you don't get away with it, you suicide by cop. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Here's the true thing. If you're suicidal and you're tired of living and you're like you've really thought about it. Don't do yourself. Go to Scientology, join up, get to the point where they're like, hey, we're going to give you this $250,000 credit with AMX. Then just chase and bore in their asses. Buy a ticket to Bali, ba- buy a fuck ton of gold and a ticket to Bali and just fuck off. They can't get you over there. I've always said this. If you're going to kill yourself, have a, little, have a little fun. Bert. Think about it. Don't kill yourself. Go do something smart. Go dine to- and dash. Yeah, dine and dash. Scientology. Go to Pastis in Manhattan. Yes. Get some, get some fucking. I mean, come on. You get a cash advance on that credit. You're not going to get nearly two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but you get a lot. And then just you can't. Also, you I can't travel. About cash advance, great recommendation. Yeah, you can't travel overseas with. Okay, so you can't travel overseas with all that money. Sure, you can. You can no, suicide. You can't. I don't think. I don't think you can. I don't think you can get <laughs> on a plane with more than ten thousand dollars in cash. Huh? I don't think you get on a plane with more than ten thousand dollars in cash unless you have an ambassadorship. 
So, oh, uh, I see. Uh, or uh, uh, yeah, it's an ambassador or uh, something when you become an ambassador to a country or whatever. So what you do is you get that ten thousand. Become an you ambassador. Can, you can very then easily kill yourself. You can very easily take that money, buy four Rolexes. Boom, I boom, think boom. I think if I say boom, kill boom, yourself, boom. I, I get fucked with you too. Yeah, well, they're fine. Allegedly, uh, we said we said Allegedly. kill yourself to a bunch of people. Uh, Allegedly, but just buy four Rolexes. Fucking fly to France, fly to somewhere where you're gonna get top dollar for them. Sell three of them, keep one on you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you got hundred thousand. Dude, do what the bling ring did. Yeah, literally go to Paris Hilton's house and just be like, have a ball. What's Take what you ring? want. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. know about the bling ring? Yeah, get into Scientology to rob them. Allegedly, oh, great idea. Yeah, literally rob David Miscavige. Yeah, but that that takes work. I think I think I think once you get that line of credit, if that's truly what they're going to do for people, if they're like, if you're you, I'm, I'm sure they're not offering that to every jack on the street. I'm sure you got to be in a couple years. If you're suicidal, join Scientology. They're going to give you three square meals a day. They're going to make sure you can work out. I guarantee your life will Go be wor- your, li- your life. You hate all your friends. You hate your family, or else you want to be suicidal. Just you'll be da- your life will be daisy for a couple years. Get that two hundred fifty thousand dollar line of credit, and then just disappear. And know that you're going to like do a Mishima like eventually. Yeah, like just disappear, and then and then leave. Disappear be- and disembowel. Live in a foreign country, knowing you've won. Yeah, absolutely. Live in a foreign country. Commit crimes if yes. you feel inclined. I mean, if you, the thing is, is, is you in that when you truly have nothing to lose, you truly can act on impulse alone and live as though you're a child, and you almost probably regain some sort of sense of like childlike wonder. Um, well, there's nothing although more you might be perceived as a psychopath by those around you, but it won't matter because your yeah. life is effectively over. There's nothing more liberating than having nothing to lose. But here's the problem is like nobody that's suicidal is sitting here planning how they're going to continue to live in this shitty existence. They're idiots. They're already like done mentally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's cowardly to kill yourself when you could rob a bank. When you could fucking do way better and rob Scientology. Just mm-hmm. go in there. Yeah. Fucking put your time in. It's like, don't commit suicide. Write a screenplay. Okay, yeah, that's what we <laughs> and need. then try to shop it around, and then when yeah. you see that no one cares, then do it. Um, yeah, it's it's Scientology is it's a very uniquely LA thing, and actually not so much anymore. Obviously, they expanded to what Clearwater, Florida, and elsewhere, Texas. Oh, Clearwater has been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, but it started here. It mm. started here, and um, and you can tell. Uh, but and and to me, it's just impressive. It's impre- I almost wonder, I'm like, are they an arm of the government? How have they continued to sustain themselves after the the public relations warfare that has been committed upon them? Yeah. Really, how? How do they continue to thrive they're, in this way? And I don't birth. know if they're thriving. Because they have tax-exempt status. It's fine. And how did that one. happen again? Somebody explained it to us in the comments. Thing, and I they probably, oh, they, bullied, the, they, they bullied the IRS or something for years. They just kept suing. Sure. I think that's what they did is they'll just sue and sue and sue and sue. They'll just sue and sue and sue. Until yeah. they're just like, Very okay, litigious organization. Yeah. Okay. They can afford to do yeah. it. They have a lot of lawyers. They just keep suing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But you can't sue someone with nothing to lose. You can't sque- squeeze blood from a stone. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah. Well, I just want to know, how was Leah Remini so close to J-Lo for so long? J-Lo wasn't a Scientologist. Maybe they that have was after. I'm, I'm sure know. Daniel Pena is close with, like, all the guys he's worked Daniel with. Daniel Pena, know. Michael. Michael Pena. Well, I don't think they can really be that close with anyone who's... But then again, Danny Masterson got that letter from Ashton Amila. They did a show together, though. I don't fucking know how it works. It's all stupid, dude. The thing is, is if you have money, you have money. And if you don't, you don't. This idea that, like, Scientology is going to separate you from the classism that is, the, like, the daily existence that you live in is a mm-hmm. joke. In fact, all it does... Scientology is just another version of Erewhon or, like, Bristol Farms. It's not fucking anything that different. It's just another label. It's just another fucking a finely packaged crock of horse shit that you spend entirely too much money on just like you buy a $50 spinach dip at Era One, you buy a fucking $5,000 Dianetics book. To you, mm-hmm. it's really no difference. The price makes no difference. All, so long as you're happily deceived and content with, um, you know, your life. And that's the life of somebody who is doing pretty well. Like there is obviously some lack of adversity or maybe your adversity is that you're now, you know, a part of this thing and you have to you have to move up in the organization and like you're a part of something and you're like in a in a group and you're needed and people care about you. It's like some people do stand up comedy to feel that. Some people join Scientology. Yeah. It just depends on your tax bracket. Really. Yeah. I'm it's gonna... all the same. People that like go seek community in places like this, I just I have a weird disdain for them. Yeah, I'll uh I, I'm gonna join next week. <laughs> 
I mean, John as a Scientologist would honestly rock. I would, I would maybe consider in. joining as a bit just because it'd be fun. It'd be funny. I don't know how. I don't want them to like trap me somehow. If they have legally. like a good gym, like if they have like perks and stuff, like if oh, I if sure. they have like an Equinox like thing, I'll fucking tr- pretend to give. Oh a no, shit. They, they have a shitty gym. I mean, I would go to Sunday school to eat donuts as a kid sometimes. Like I same thing. You think I'm fucking any above going to? It's, the only reason is that they like take pictures of you and they like fucking. The extortion element of it is like, I, you what are you feel so like, scared of? Like, what do you like got? What, well, you, what are you afraid they're gonna find? Well, you feel like you're walking into Jeffrey Epstein's house. Not that you're gonna be diddled or nothing, but like that you're gonna be watched and filmed. Who and gives a shit? I don't want to be filmed. I got nothing to hide. Who gives a fuck? It's not even about that. It's film like, like don't there, film was, me. there is a great. There is, I believe, in it's like weird. the '60s or something, the CIA hired a hooker for the Prime Minister of Indonesia. And then filmed him having sex with her and threatened to, to <laughs> leak it. Threatened to like leak it. Threatened to leak it to like the Classic public. Classic stuff, boys. And you know what the president of Indonesia did? What? He asked for a copy of it because he was so proud of it. That's fucking awesome. So that that's, rocks, that's what dude. you do. That's And then they said, oh, fuck, we can't do it to this guy. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. You just, you lean into it. You go, oh, you got a video of me doing something. You, you taking intravenous drugs. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I mean, it's. I don't know. That's that's that. I had a very Scientology filled weekend. I went to a great Iranian birthday party. Persian birthdays are just the best, mm-hmm. just the best. They really do it all out, like to the nines. Mm-hmm. Had a lot of fun there. Met some cool people. I saw somebody smash a guitar at the Viper Room in a real guitar? life IRL. Yeah, somebody I guess Who that's like loosely associated with Johnny Depp's new band. Oh god. Oh uh, well, geez. part of Johnny Depp's band was there. The oh. the the vampires, the bloody vampires, the Hollywood vampires. Hollywood vampires. How do you know that? Because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a hep, I'm a deaf head. <laughs> it's like being a dead head, but I'm a deaf <laughs> head. Uh, Hollywood, He's a deaf head. A deaf, the Hollywood vampires are there. Oh my god! Have, we, have you played? Have you seen him play the guitar? No. Is he good? Eh. It's just kind of funny. He's Johnny Depp. It's just kind of funny. He well, thinks I was he's there so with his bassist. Cool. His bassist was there. That was not who smashed the guitar, but they all got really mad at the guy that smashed the guitar because it was really out of nowhere. And it was like a kind of a crazy episode. Like, a, episode. That's nerdy. That's what the clash did. You don't do that. We can kind of tell he's, he the was playing, he was, well, they're all so talented. These, they're older they're guys in their forties or something. smashing the guitar Huh? He's well, smashing he guitars was, he, was, uh, he was upset. It was really crazy actually. Oh, he was upset. He was upset at oh, the, what? at the vampires guy because the, something with the tuning of the acoustic, he was playing a beautiful song. It was so good. I felt like I was in the fucking nineties. Like it oh, was, and he got frustrated and he got frustrated and he's like, you fucking did something with the tuning. And then he kind of like, so you can kind of see the crazy bubble in his eyes. And he's like, and it's, like, and while playing, of course he's drinking too, you know? Yeah. So that doesn't help anybody, but we're all drinking, you know? And, uh, he's playing a really great song. And then in the middle of it, I don't know what the bassist said from the Hollywood vampires, yeah. but he, um, you know, but, then he took the guitar and he just fucking, he's like the E tuning, the E tuning, something with the E, I don't know. Was it in the mic who's saying this? There's no mic. We're sitting around a booth. The Viper room is closed. We're oh, all really? there after hours. The place is shut down. We just yeah. know the owners, I guess, at this point or some shit. Yeah, we. And fucking, uh, I don't fucking know, dude. And they took the guitar, not me, shit. Yeah. I mean, but they took the guitar and fucking just like. What kind of guitar was it? Acoustic, black, pretty destroyed probably, it probably destroyed it no one's there just us and then we're all like all right well we're gonna get out of here and yeah, then he's like hinge. and then he kind of came outside and he's like apologizes to the band members and apologizes and he's like you know what i'm sorry that was out of line just come in who was a, this dude get a drink another guitar player another another wow. musician i don't think he was with johnny depp's band but he knew all the band members and like they were all like listen johnny depp saw, was there when river phoenix died in the viper room a million years ago so i guess they yeah. all kind of i don't know if, i guess some of them still hang out there i don't know but um i met uh, the viper room in years it was, this was the first time I'd been. I'd never been. A cool, cool place. I mean, I, I enjoyed being there and the guy playing the guitar as crazy as he got. He, I was, like the he was very good. He was very good. And everybody was super sweet. And everybody from the, from the, from the Hollywood vampires, very sweet people. Um, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time, but it was, it was just interesting that I was like, oh my God, fully, f- I've never seen someone smash a guitar mm-hmm. before. Um, and then, uh, oh, and then I had a mystical time in my friend's like recording studio. And then he urged me to read rick rubin's creative act a way of being which he oh, very kindly gifted that. to me and it's a wonderful book have you heard about this what have you heard i'm shocked I love that rick i rubin. like it as much as i do i love rick rubin i had no he idea how much I he made liked he him. made my favorite band what it is he uh, which one what am I, so one of many my to choose bands. from he made the cult the cult the cult what is the cult a fantastic um so they they started off let in me the guess 80s. it's danny masterson michael pena <laughs> jason lee 
No, it's it's. And then the guy from the from the Hollywood Vampire. Who's the lead singer of the Colt? What's his fucking name? Uh, this guy. So it, it started off. They started off as Southern Death Cult in the eighties. Okay. And then in the early nineties, I believe. Let's see. Um. Oh, they formed in Bradford, nineteen eighty three. So. Uh yeah, so this so basically they they evolved throughout the eighties as a goth rock band. Okay, and they were a very good goth rock band, and then uh, and then oh shit, this, I thought it was the early nineties they did she sell she sells sanctuary. That's crazy. You don't know your cult, dude. Oh wow, that's cr- oh my god. So um they uh they basically and then uh Rick Rubin. God damn, let me see. Well, the I book, I the book is fantastic. It's also one of the coolest, like, looking books I've ever seen. It looks kind of like a record player, but also mm-hmm. like a zen symbol. I'm, like, sitting here doing an advertisement at Rick Ruin. Like, come on the pod, please. But it's very pretty. And I read, like, I don't know, like 100-something pages in one sitting. I was very surprised that I was as into it as I was because it's not the type of book I would typically gravitate towards. Ian Asbury. What That's is his name? He's the singer of the cult. He has one of the best voices in rock and roll history, in my opinion. Okay, interesting. But uh, Rick Rubin, basically, they were like a gothic southern. They were a gothic uh, goth rock band in like the eighties, and then uh, Rick Rubin got him. It was like, listen, you guys need to go into hard rock. Oh, okay. And they went. They transferred to hard rock, and they made some of the sickest fucking songs. Well, he he kind of like LARPs as someone who does not LARPs. I don't want to say that, but like he acts like he knows less about music than he actually does. I'm sure, but he, he knows because you know that viral taste. clip that went around. Yeah. It's like I don't. He doesn't know how to play music I don't at know all. How to, it's like that's not true. You've definitely know how to like. You used to be a guitarist. I found out, and like a few other things. Like well, he has he's, impeccable taste. That's he's got. He's, it's, he's got, and that. But the and so he's right in that. That's mostly his skill. But that's similar to like someone like Kanye, who's just got. I mean, Im- immense talent. You hear that? What a city moment. You hear that helicopter? There's but it also has just lately. great taste, huh? I saw Black Hawk downtown today. Did you? Uh, like a, a helicopter or a hawk? Military helicopter flying downtown. Black Hawk. Oh. Big military helicopter. Black Hawk down? Black Hawk down. That's one of the ones they shot down. But anyways, uh, the, uh, yeah, Rick, but the thing about Rick Rubin is he can do, he has impeccable taste across genre. Totally. Difficult, yeah. difficult to well, find. I think He's if, trusted by- I think if by, you truly have incredible taste- it does cross pollinate into many arenas of life and that'll materialize yeah, but, in many uh, arenas of life. So if, if your place is nicely decorated, often your taste in, oh, actually that's not true. That's not true. Sometimes that's not your true. taste, that's not true. That's I, not I, true. I, 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 I recant. That's not true. I recant. Yeah, I think, I think having impeccable taste it in rock and roll. It should be that way, but nothing He's ever been really batting is. 100. He's been batting 100 as far as music But with hip hop and with everything too. Rock yeah, and roll. Just, it's like I jumping mean, back and forth between those is crazy. Guys made $300 million. Wow. What a guy. Well, a part of me while I was reading the book was disturbed at how um, zen he was because I was thinking of all the reasons I'm anxious about He my does life. TDM, doesn't he? I'm sure he does. Yeah. The way he speaks in the book is really easy for if you're a creative person or you care about creativity or maybe even if you don't there's a lot to take from it Mm -hmm. and it kind of talks about the reason i didn't think i'd like it is because i don't i would never call it self-help but it certainly um is there to shift your perspective it's not a narrative about you know it's not some fictional story it's not a non-fictional story it's meditative um and that's usually not my beat because to me that kind of falls under self-help but it's not really it's it's more he's giving you his perspective as somebody who's created some of the best works of art yeah. that we've ever known. Yeah. And there's an, uh, and it's a very kind of, it's very readable, very easy to read. Um, you know, he's got a good vocabulary and shit, but it's not like he's sitting there, you know, writing some, it's not like you're not reading Dostoevsky. You're reading something that's, you know, actually a lot more digestible, I would mm-hmm. say, and probably a lot more applicable to your life, especially if you're somebody who, is is interested in the things around you, not just your relationships and your social life, but you're interested in in, in um, observing the things around you and having like a keen sense of awareness of of coincidences that are happening around you or things that you think maybe are just uh you know maybe they're just serendipitous or really actually you know not happy accidents at all, but are signs that maybe you're supposed to move in a certain direction or that you're, Mm. and I'm not, again, someone that believes in really destiny or fate, but I don't think that's really what it is either. It's just a very unique perspective of how the universe is going to do what it's going to do. And you're not actually, it kind of takes the narcissism out of artistry because it, he kind of makes the point that the artist themselves 
is not who is coming up with the art. They're merely a vessel for a message the universe already wants to put out there in the universe. And thus, yeah. you really shouldn't take much narcissism or pride or ego from what it is that you create and produce. It should, you should never stop yourself from creating it. You should do everything you can to create it. But, uh, but you're not the great master genius in it. The universe is the genius in everything. Yeah. And you're just a component of that. And however much you can contribute to that is great. And you should try everything in your might and in your power to do so. But, um, but, and I've only, again, 130 pages in, and there's a lot about the memory and the subconscious and kind of the way sub the subconscious works in this very mysterious way through our dreams. And, you know, he does give you recommendations of like, you know, use a dream journal or something that you might find in like some astrological thing will tell you, oh, get a dream journal. But he does it in a way that isn't like gay and lame. Yeah. He's very... He's a cool well, guy. He's I don't dream because cool I don't have REM sleep. Okay, I used to travel a lot in my my late teens, early twenties. I would go on these big grand adventures, and I would go to crazy mm -hmm. foreign countries, and I would uh, and I would plan out these hostile trips. And I every time the first time I went, I, the first place I went was when I was seventeen. I went to China. That's right. And uh, I remember before I went, I had all these ideas in my head about what it's going to be like. And like right. what I'm gonna do out there, and all these fun fantasies I'd have, and then I'd show up there, and it would be completely different as to what I thought it would be like. I'd show up, and my trip would be completely horrible, but it'd always be amazing. I was the yeah. best time ever. Yeah. And then I went somewhere else. Then I went to Africa, and I had this, all these ideas and plans. And I was like, oh man, it's gonna be just like this. I wonder what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like this in my head. And I was fantasizing about it for months and months and months. And then I make the trip out, and I go out there, and it's completely different than what I thought it'd be, and it was amazing. It was amazing. So, that's life though is like you never nobody ever well, lives what it the is. life they think they're going to live and the ones that do come on the podcast and explain to yeah. me how you went from well, you plan, can manifest how, how did you I, I i what i what you what happened is 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 basically i started getting addicted to that feeling of the fantasy mm. and the letdown the mm -hmm. positive letdown almost where you get out there and you're like oh it's actually nothing like what i thought it was but it still kicks ass you got addicted to the insight you'd gain. i got addicted to the insight i gained and then and then so like what i I've been trying to do the past 10 fucking years is kind of apply that to every kind of bit of my life. Cause honestly you can do that waking up in the morning. You could be like tonight, you could be like, Oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this tomorrow. And it's going to be amazing. And then you wake up tomorrow and it's horrible, but it's, it could be amazing. You know It what could I mean? be amazing. Yeah. So it's is like, it it's like weird, amazing? weird shit like that. It was amazing when I discovered the book and I was like, mm -hmm. my friend was making like these amazing beats and I'm sitting there like in a trance cause the studio, like this, the sound system is insane. It's like, I've never, I've never heard a sound system like that. That's mm. so, um, it's not too loud. You can make it really, really, really loud, but it still sounds ambient in your ear. Yeah. And I'm so I'm listening to incredible music literally being made in front of me while I'm listening to the greatest music maker. Wait, Rick Rubin or, or while I'm reading the book of the great. Oh, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. Jesus he was not. He was not, he was not. Oh my God. In my dreams. Would he be there? Um, no, if he was there, I'd be having a panic attack probably uh, in a good way. But, I get, I get, um, I get, so, I get stars. Or I would too. be Zen because I would be taking the advice from his book, which I found very Zen. It was like the, it was like the literary, uh, version of the Zen gardens that I would buy from the dollar store as a kid. Yeah. And I would just sit there and I would rake the little plastic rake with my sand and with my rocks and I'd pretend yeah. like I was a, like a, like a Buddhist in, in, you know, rural Japan and my beautiful botanical Zen garden with my bonsai tree. <laughs> of course, that's not my life. I'm cleaning ketchup stains off a fucking, you know, off a, a booth at a restaurant. Yeah. But in my mind, in my fantastical dreamy mind, I'm like, oh, that that's definitely what's happening. I, I do that too. I'm driving around. I think of myself as the captain of a ship. Well, you and I I'm are very imaginative car. people and that's what gets us through our day. And so when you read a book like this, some might consider it self-help, but I completely disagree because I, I, I completely uh, reject self-help. I, I don't care about yeah. reading the four agreements. Maybe there's shit to be taken from it. I don't give a shit though. But this was interesting because it was all, it was, it was, it was very much lending itself to how to, um, how to mag, how to really get as much as you can from the limited perspective you have in the world around you and to take the signals that are, are being given to you and to, and to use them Mm -hmm. in some sort of like you know productive creative vessel yeah to and it i don't know i just it was it was obviously very much from his experience but it was very it was very insightful um and i i'm i'm gonna probably finish it either like tomorrow or the next day but and i want to apologize to the audience we're not in the green zone in iraq uh, <laughs> no, just what happens, is going on? i think there happens should there's we check probably the just some, should we check yeah, it's like an armed on? shooter or some shit down the street yeah, it's there's probably a, a woman a wielding a screwdriver yeah. on well. sunset yeah, you hear that? Oh, yeah, put the mic up, put the mic up. That's a nice sitting moment. Oh, shit. Large crowd gathered on the Hollywood freeway. What? One mile away, yeah. Um, a citizen user. Oh, we have video. 
I wish we could get nice the Citizen day. video on here. A completely standstill traffic. I wish we could get the video on here for oh, you guys. Oh, Armenians. Is it Armenian protest? Yeah, Hell Armenian yeah. Somebody yeah. commented Armenians live off of the government. What more did they want? I don't think that's true, dude. That's not true. Armenians. That's not true. They're fucking. They're no, actually, I think it's true a lot. Of so Nicholas Gusukian disagrees. What are they doing? Somebody said typical Armenian behavior, entitled, privileged, and not courteous of others. That's not typical Armenian. They're very polite people. They're very polite people. They just had a genocide committed against them that they're still trying to get recognition for. Just? I mean, with the turkey? That was years. No, I'm saying they just as in they only like being sarcastic. Oh, right, right, right. True, true, true. What are they protesting about? I love the citizen app, dude. It's fucking awesome. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, bro. I'm in. So the Armenians are out and uh, the helicopter's circling. Helicopters are circling. Scientology doing its thing. People are going after. How do I get rid of this video? Bro? People are going after Russell Brand now people, because he's like, what speaking, do you do? He's, well, he's talking about things that are true. Did he and rape then, somebody? That's what they're saying. They're saying, I mean, he, he's he known rape? for being like a crazy comic back in the day. Like, what, I mean, you don't think, yeah, he, had, you don't think, think he had any he wacky was, sexual encounters? Guess again, buddy. He probably did, but he I was don't kind of hated back in England. A lot of guys they hate. He was known here. as being like a bad boy comic, and we're all supposed to be like, uh, oh, oh my God, he might have fucked a few people. Yeah, he was also incredibly not good looking back in the day. He's way better I looking. I find him now. attractive. I now find, he's good I, looking, I but back in the day, he was an ugly man. Um, young Russell Brand. I'm Some guys age like wine. He has aged like wine, yeah, especially given the the amount of substances in his body, you know? Yeah. I mean, and so, you know, he he's... It's, there's the helicopters going wild. No, I like it. I like it. Don't you think it kind of adds a nice... It add, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's just nice. They really get the they Hollywood really live. vibe. Yeah, no, you guys... Yeah, New York. Start you hear New York pop, podcast. Pop, they have pop, sirens pop. going on in the background. It's like, I want to have something cool. Eee. Let's have an L.A. moment. Let's have a Hollywood equivalent We're out here. That. If, you, out if here. you're in one of those shitty parts of the... I'm just kidding. The best part. If you're in one of the best parts it's of the country... One of those country, flyover states? One of those, the best over states. Um, <laughs> and, the leftover uh, states. The leftover. If you've never been uh, buzzed by a police helicopter at a high school party. Which, by, did you ever have that happen to you in Texas? Holy Not shit, once. dude. We were, I were, that happened like three times. Dude, I never saw like a helicopter in Texas. I don't know why. They're like not, there's no choppers. Because yeah, you don't there. need them. You just stand up and look straight and you got like 25 miles of visibility. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, I remember I was at this hell, this party up in the hills up in La Cunata and uh, all of a sudden there's just, it's like fucking you're in like a pocket. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then fucking there's a, I swear to God, uh, there was a helicopter a hundred feet above the fucking party hmm. there must have been 200 kids at this house jesus spotlight down and then people start freaking the fuck out so there's a, there's a cliff behind the party there's mm -hmm. a pool so all the kids start taking the trash cans from the side yard and throwing them over the fucking like people didn't know what to do because it's just absolute panic <laughs> we were freaking the fuck out and then all of a sudden just fucking flashlights and uh every exit to the house there was cops with breathalyzers oh no oh yeah and they're breathalyzing oh, kids the cops are and they had a fucking paddy wagon and if you were like the the kids that were dumb to st that stopped because cops would bust up parties and then everyone just scrambles. So, like the kids are stupid enough to stop and get breathalyzed. You can just push past the cops. Can't you just run? Yeah, that's what we always did. They wouldn't chase you. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, why don't you just yeah, run? Yeah, but some kids with goody two shoes and be like, oh my God, running. officer, I'm sorry. So, uh, one of my favorite things ever happened. I might have been inclined to do that in my younger years when I was, I'd be like, I'll just sweet talk the guy. No, but, get the fuck out. Yeah, you run, so, you uh, run, you run. Someone's trying to punch you, run. I remember Someone's there was a. to beat me up, I'd run. There was a party I went to one time in high school, and I just remember there's this kid, JP, it was, it was his house. And uh, the cops busted up, and everybody's scrambling. Of course, they bust a guy screaming. named JP. Yeah, JP's just and JP's Classic. screaming. JP's screaming. Hey, make sure you guys have a designated driver, like all this stuff. He's just panicking. JP's freaking out. He's like, my God, my parents JP are gonna, needs a DD. My parents are gonna fucking kill me, like all this shit. And I just remember my buddy Matt went up to him and just went, "Hey, JP, is your dad gonna be mad, dude?" <laughs> <laughs> He's having a panic attack. That's awesome. <laughs> Is your dad going to be mad, dude? And then Did he, he pass out and fall on the floor? <laughs> it was so fucking funny. Poor Just JP. It in. Yeah, but one time, uh, one time we got kicked out of a party and this uh, friend of mine, uh, he called the cops on the party because they kicked us out. Oh. And he said, yeah, there's a bunch of guys fighting in there. And then they all pulled up and they had a big paddy wagon. Oh, I've seen knives at parties. It was crazy. I've, I, I, I've never been like seen a gun at a party, but... Yeah. I haven't. I have had friends that have seen that, though. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I don't think this is the hall. I mean, I think this is literally right here. 
Or that must be circling downtown LA. Well, the 101 is right down here, so I guarantee you. I, gu- I mean, yeah, that's that's about right. Those things are loud, bro. Fucking crazy, bro. Um, four, four. It's almost as loud as an Armenian car in Glendale. Um, their cars <laughs> almost fart. as loud as a as a Beamer fucking driving no. past you on brand. It's yeah, their cars sound like me after barbecue. Just Dude, people <laughs> loved our broke at Equinox episode where we just talked about like great smoothies and milkshakes. We got, I was like shocked people like that. That was like an episode that good smoothies came out of nowhere. Oh, let's get an Nemo's Dreamscape. Come on, all right. You all right. keep talking. I keep. I'll yeah, it John is like so in need I'm of so like, comfort from old tunes, and oh, I get it. I feel yeah, you, dude. Yeah, I really I'm just dying right now. I'm like so stressed out. It's crazy. Same I wish here. I could talk about it, but my lawyer banned me from talking. Yeah. My lawyer calls me and goes, uh, do you have a podcast? And I go, yeah. And he goes, don't talk about this on the podcast. I wish I could just say I had a lawyer. Like, I wish I needed a lawyer for something. I, I would love to just have ass. a lawyer on retainer for like some. My lawyer's dispute. cool. I bother him a lot. I know I annoy him. Um, he's that's a cool. great guy. I mean, why else have a lawyer if not, you know, that's really lovely. That's extremely lovely, actually. Wow. Just in time for fall. But can we have like one last summer? Well, I hate this like getting into fall. It's not fall yet. Like I'm so sick of everybody. No, you know what? John? I'm gonna I'm gonna stand my ground. It's summer. We need a su- we need summer. Just I'm tired know. of summer. Summer's for fucking losers. No, I've I'm dealt not. with so many I'm goddamn summer. I can't fucking, believe you're t- still into summer being it's from summer Texas. Summer 1949. You're reading by the lake. Old music. That's a good one. That's oldies. a good one. I like this one. Yeah, we need to put it on the screen. Because it has the water sound effects. It's full screen that bitch. I like the the vignette around the. Uh, it's lovely, photos. and I'm also like we have seen this one. Of them. That like, looks like this. One? That looks like the beach at Eagles like, Nest at the end of Bender Brothers. Damn, um, that's like the only summer one he's got, bro. Oh, we have this. We played that Nemo one. Nemo hates time. summer, bro. People be hating on summer, and I used to hate summer, but whoa, 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 whoa this is different. Whoa, whoa, it's summer whoa, whoa, 1961 whoa. now. This. And you're in love. It's summer 1961 and you're in love. Oh my God, it's beach rock. It's surf rock. I mean, a fuck. Is it an emo? Yeah, it's an emo, yeah. It's cool. Full it's screen It's an underrated one, only that. 36. It's 1961. That's so 1961. Nice. That man's going to be in See Vietnam. See how her legs are moving too? There's so much detail, dude. Yeah. They look pretty fucking happy. Maybe they were in the Church of Scientology. Oh. Now I'm just feeling extremely... I've been feeling extremely existential the past, like, month. Why? I don't know, dude. I'm, I think I'm going crazy. I'm, like, this close to believing in astrology. Like, I'm like I'm on the precipice. I'm, like, one bad thing away from, like, fully just, like, you know, doing my birth chart. Because when somebody did my birth chart and I was like, I hate to say it, it's pretty accurate. And I've never believed in that are. shit. I've never believed in that shit. And not in a kind of way that's, like, overly generalized the way they always are. Like a horoscope or some shit. I don't believe in that. I think that's trash. But... The birth chart was interesting in a way that I start like, and I am a Pisces, so I'm like, maybe I'm a big dreamy fish. I'm a big emotional dreamy fish, which I've never really felt that emotional. But then they say I'm a Scorpio moon, which means I exude something different than what I actually am. I'm actually apparently a very emotional creature that gets in my own way. The second part's very true. Yeah, you are. And and then um, but that I but I but I exude. people who like to clout that they're not emotional is is, is they're usually very emotional. Whatever. You're incredibly so, emotional. Oh, You're shut fucking up, John. Persian. I'm not fucking emotional. You're fucking. Yeah, you are. You wish you weren't. I I'm. I'm. I, I. You think I'm emotional? I am not that emotional compared to you. What are you? What? No. No. What do you mean? Me and my day to day is not as emotional as you. I'm stressed out. That's not emotion. <laughs> How am I emotional in my day to day? You get, and you know, actually, yeah. I think what what I tend to do is I I'm don't very, show my emotions to people that you often. Do. I I do through anger sometimes. Yeah. So but I'm not, but not through like you have. A I'm not going to weep in front of you ever. I'm never going to do that. I'm not going to cry in front of you. Yeah, but how what, am I emotional? Like, I'm not like why. I'm not like. I do really cry in movies though, actually. But what I'm not like I'm not like going around town weeping. I'm not like sobbing in front of you. How is, am I is, so is, emotional? Is you, the funny thing is, is I describe my emotions to you, and you take that as me being emotional. I'll describe how no, I feel. No, I just think you think about you've them never, more than I think about them. You've never seen me. All those. I think a lot of the things you like assume I am. You haven't seen me actually do. I just, okay. Well, I how? Just okay. Well, well how about you. since the acu- since the accusation is on me, how mm-hmm. am I so emotional? In my true, day true, true. The accusation. Good debate. <laughs> yeah. Good debate. Yeah, how are you emotional your day today? Yeah, uh, tell. Yeah, get, riddle me that. What is it that I do that's so emotional? I guarantee you. Well, I don't. I don't observe you day to day. I just get an after action report. So I guarantee <laughs> okay. you. I guarantee if I was to like, but you sit have an here, idea, and I have an idea of your fucking day. car. And follow you around while you go to Erewhon or whatever. I don't go to Erewhon. Yeah, you're gonna go. If I, I was a little sometimes. fly on the wall, and uh, you would be. That's fucking. God, 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 God. 
Oh, it's, like being yeah, annoyed and like, shit on the street? Like, road rage? I do have road rage. And then, you, and then you get out and then you go to Starbucks and you go, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck you get. And then, uh, Sometimes. Yeah. And then you but would then uh, have nice interactions with people. Yeah. Or you'd be like, oh. I, I, I guarantee shit. you do that 15 times a day. You go, oh. No. Oh. No. You see a dog, you go, I go, I go, ew. I go, yeah, you go, ew. I go, I go, fuck. Me driving around. Have you seen the steering wheel of my car? Again, so you have no, you have no argument behind me being emotional. Yeah, that's it. Let's just, let's just. Well, say, I don't, I don't know. Well, so then I why did you that. say that? That was a crazy thing to say. Because I'm, gonna, I think the over under. In fact, is pretty, some would argue that was a really was, emotional if, response if to somebody man, to somebody calling you emotional. If I was a betting man, I think you're emotional. But you're not a betting. If you followed me around, have you seen my steering wheel of my car? It went from you're extremely emotional in your day to day to if I was a betting man, you would be extremely emotional. Yeah, yeah that's to, to I have nothing to back up my argument. Why my not? Claims. Have you seen the steering wheel of my car? <gasps> I win. Have uh, you seen the steering wheel of my car for the 15th fucking time? I mean, I have before. You know that. Yes. What is it? I don't know that's what That's my like. emotion. What's the steering wheel of your car? It's chewed. It looks like a dog chewed it. Oh, I've ripped dude, it down no. to the metal. That's my emotion. That's from your hand? That's from my hand, bro. So, you, so you're the so emotional tightly. one. My, no, my that's me not showing emotion. Perfectly that's intact. me not showing. I'm a, I'm, a st- I'm a fucking bomb ready to go off every day. And then you do in your car. No, I just squeeze the steering wheel really tight. And fart. And fart. <laughs> and <you> go, <laughs> And I, I don't like this one because it's like fucking it 60s beach rock, dude. Like, ew, dude. What's wrong with 60s let's go to, beach let's go rock? Let's go to the classics, man. It better be summer. That's the classics. Who is this bitch? Ew. An advertisement for laser hair removal. John, please step Lays it up. Away. Please step it up. What is this shit? I, swear I like my pubes gun. Go. And we're back to the one we always watch. This is going to be my life soon. I'm entering a grimy stage in my life. So am I. Super. I'm in full grime. No, 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 no. What does that mean? Oh, I shouldn't let people know where I live. I just dox myself. I'll cut it out. Don't you worry. Thank you. Um, I uh, you please please there. do that. Please you cut it out. There. No, 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 no. I'll Ida, cut it out. Ida, I'll please. Cut it out. I'm I'll so watch doxed. this, John, and I'll see that this happened, it's and very, I'll cut it out. It's very important that actually I don't let people know where I live because if they rat on me, I won't be. Able so to that's why anymore. you just did. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be living uh, downtown LA. Uh, DTLA. DTLA, very grimy part of downtown LA. And I plan. He's on gonna live at the Cecil Hotel, guys. So if you want to go, if you want to go see John, go to the Cecil Hotel. Essentially, I'm gonna be living like he'll be Harrison inside the Ford. water tower. I'm he'll be floating. Yeah, Harrison Ford and Blade Runner. Every night, I'm gonna walk around and just meet people. That's what I plan on doing. Yeah, I'll be doing that, but I'll be working in downtown LA. So. Are you working in DTLA? Probably. Really? I don't. That'll know. be so fun. I'll we can s- hang out. Yeah, after I slip my wrist every day. Yeah. After I get off my shift. When you Sorry, get off your I shift. guess I am emotional. <laughs> yeah, no. When you get off your shift and like, you know, you bring your work friends and I'll go. Me and know. Clay are trying to work low-key at the same restaurant. Like he's going to try to become the chef. What was that? Reaction? Never got along with Clay. Damn, what? I was going to have him on the podcast. Him. Seriously? I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure he's fine. Now, last time I saw him was very pleasant. Never got along with Clay. What? I thought you guys were getting along You know this great. about me. No, I've I said don't. this a bazillion times in front of you. I don't. I, again, I have so much storage in my. Mm. I'm not supposed to remember. All. I didn't. I didn't think. Last time I hung out, I didn't think dudes had beefs like this. I thought everyone just kind of got along. No, I just can't. I, we all. Just I, it's very rare, but I just say the last time I saw him. Maybe it's because you guys are guy. similar in some ways. Probably that's what I think it is. I think last time I saw him, he's a very pleasant guy. I think we both grow. He's quite a very. A bit. He's a very pleasant guy. Yeah. He Clay is an interesting guy. He's just a fun. He's he's, he's a fun guy. He's mm-hmm. wild. He's a wild guy, but he's like a chef. What well, chefs are like crazy people. I, I, but that's the other thing. I've never gotten along with a chef. You're not supposed to get along with a chef. You're supposed to marvel at them and no, have fun and no, have fun, have a good no. time. I've always had tension with chefs. I've had, I've had, I've been in fights love, with Clay. Love kitchen. Managers. I've been in fights with Clay. Clay once brought a gun here, and brought yeah, it out and took it and took it out, and shouldn't pretended to shoot Devin. Wow, that's very. And I lost my shit, yeah. and then he started freaking out at me and started fucking with me and like walking around the house and like going through my mail just to piss me off and like it was like a crazy battle. And then we got over. That's wrong with that's wrong. Com- that's wrong with comedians. It was fine. It was fine. Again, I'm a rabbit, but I've been around cr- enough crazy people since moving here. Not really since yeah. not before then. I've never met personalities like I have in L. A. and Dallas. Mm-hmm. I've never I've never run into them. But again, it just it's part of the territory. Like Clay is an exceptionally entertaining guy. Yeah. And I that just, I, kind I, of I, he was never gonna hurt Devin. It wasn't he obviously well, pointing it, a real it wasn't at it wasn't loaded, is, obviously, but Well you it never was know that. Pointing the a, fact that Don't he defend had, pointing a real handgun. I'm at not defending it. I'm never, the one, I'm never the one ever that, do that. 
Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, even thinking about it in retrospect, you know how many I'm like, people's last words are "Don't worry, Devin it's not didn't loaded." Didn't even care. I'm the one that was because uh, he doesn't know about. But it, I'm yeah. but I'm bad cop, right? I'm Texas. the big bitch girlfriend because I have to come out and be like, "Don't bring weapons into the house." The fuck are you doing? I'm gonna bring weapons here. If you bring weapons here, John, I will fucking I will lose my shit. I mean, I like is it so much to am I reaching for the stars here? Am I reaching for the stars to ask the the men in my life to not bring weapons to the place Fire that arms. I live? Firearms. Wep no, weapons. No weapons. Are okay. weapons. You bring a spear weapons by are a larger, here, it's all right. larger umbrella, okay? So if, if you I have a, a if, yeah, anything sword is a here? weapon. So if you have a Snickers bar in your pocket, that's fine as long as you're not wielding it at somebody, right? But is it, but if it's if it's coming out <laughs> no, I mean, again, like that was that was an instance of like craziness where he didn't mean anything by it, but yeah, but you shouldn't be pointing guns. Of course people, not. So. But he, you know, he apologized and he yeah, understood and he got it. And again, yeah, last time I, he, last time I saw, he I only saw, he's I've not, only he's seen not Clay insane. Like he's like a good person. Five years, last time I saw him, was very pleasant. That's it. Yeah. Well, so if I have him on, should you be here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. And we, actually, we can reform the friendship. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, and he knows a lot about downtown, so that's why we were thinking about you know restaurants because he works at a restaurant. And I'm gonna go back to a restaurant. So why don't you just find a what? good good fucking restaurant and just go? That's what I'm gonna do. I really want to work at the best possible restaurant I can get. I want to get the most money I can possibly get if I'm gonna be. Go to Macaroni Republic. Fucking Macaroni Republic. Yeah, this that is Italian what I'm saying. I'm gonna have to Broadway. get on it. I'm gonna get on an SSRI the second I start working. <laughs> it's gonna be fucked fine. up. I'm not can, gonna I mean, really do that. You can work at that. Applebee's and make fucking a thousand dollars a ship. So you, that coming out of your mouth makes me want to cock a gun in my mouth. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and no I and I don't for, mean no any disrespect to, for, to people no. that have worked at Applebee's. I'm just saying the idea of it, and I've done it before. I've worked in restaurants for years. So it's like this weird, um, I'm not gonna like, I don't wanna misuse PTSD, it's really it's not PTSD. But it's just like, I just have these reflexive memories of just awful times I've had in yeah. and mostly just that it's the time that's being wasted. I, I have I have a friend who's a bartender at like a shitty, shitty speed bar at a fucking arcade bar. Yeah. And she makes what I make in five days, she makes in like, she makes what I make in like four days in two days. Yeah, I mean, so I, that's why no, I'm going to no do fine dining. I'm nice going to do f- yeah, fine dining. I feel like fine dining is just way too. You got to do wine service. You got to fucking. That's what I'm going to be. That's why I, I want to cock a gun in my mouth because I'm going to. I'm going to have to learn. I'm going to have to learn about the fucking peppercorn yeah, don't sauce. Don't do that. On the just steak, get a, just get a job a at a nice restaurant where you don't have to do that shit. I want to make as much money as yeah, I can, you can possibly make, make you, if I'm going to be I know, at tables. shitty places. You can make more money because it's that doesn't. But matter. I have a history of fine dining. I can make more money doing fine dining. It's objectively true that if you have a fatter check, you're going to make more money. And if you can turn and burn that shit, you'll make good money by the end of the night. Again, it's this or stripping. I don't really know what to do. All right, so. Yeah, I just think uh, wine service. I, you know, it's it funny. Is. You're like you're like a veteran server. I don't respect servers at all. It's because we're better than you. No, you, the veteran you servers. Me. You bother me all day. Because we, we can get in a re- we can go into in a restaurant yeah, stuff wanna, on the Patreon. Yeah, we can actually. We're gonna get into that. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be back of the house versus front of the house. Even though John is front of the house, house, he's gonna take on the spirit of the back of the I'm house the, because the, because he thinks that working at a shittier place gives him the kind I'm of the like the stolen valor of back of the house. I'm the general. I'm not back of house. I hate back of yeah, house. Yeah, I know. Fuck what I'm saying like that's the that's that's the spirit that you're taking on. I'm the general. There's no only person in a front of house restaurant that would have like I think as much pull as me would be like a major major D. Every restaurant I've ever worked at, the bartender's like the king of the front of the house. I bartended too. I'm not not a bartender. I could quiz you on bartending. I bartended in fine dining. I mean, not that long, but I did it. You're, you're already. You're I'm already gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna not, quiz you. I don't actually <laughs> care about this battle. It's the difference. Is like you think this is important, and it's not. It's so meaningless. Like oh, our li- our lives are like completely meaningless in the grand scheme of things. Nobody's life matters at all. Isn't it amazing? You're being a doomer. Get out of here. No, nobody. My life kicks ass and matters. It's your I, life matters. I. I I think the only person's life that seems to matter on any level is like Rick Elon Rubin. Musk. No. Starlink is like dependent on him. Anyways, this is so, what a sad ending. Your life matters, folks. You matter. If you're on our Patreon, then you actually matter. Then you really Yeah, matter. move to Patreon. It's going to be fun. It's going to be gonna, real, yeah, real shit fest over there. We're going to chill there. It's going to be less Doomer. It's going to be more. Zoomer. Let's do more, more, more bloomer. More zoomer. More, more bloomer. bloomer. More bloomer. That's a real thing. Bloomers. Bloomers is doomers. No tumors. No boos. No boomers. No losers. No okay sooners. No uh, gooners. Anything else? That's right. it. Um, <laughs> we're out. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, <laughs> join the Church of Scientology. 
Let yes. us know how it is. Yes. If you have any experiences with it, comment down below. Um, if you have any experiences about anything, comment down below. Helps us. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you very much for being here. It's patreon.com slash the eye to hour. John, what's your Instagram? Oh, John Badman. J O H M B A D D M A N. Yeah, Ida Tabs, I D A T A V S is the first time I've ever promoted my Instagram on the show. Do it. Um, you know, there, it's never too late to um, start surprising yourself with mm -hmm. how pathetic you can be. Mm -hmm. So take take that from us and apply it to your own life. All right, folks. Uh, good night and good luck. Good night.